Hello, and welcome to episode <laughs> five of the Van Dyke Mortgage WMC Sports Podcast brought to you by Durga Insurance Group. Uh, I am uh, Brent Rath, and uh, I'm here with my co hosts, Scott DeCamp, Tate Stein, and Ken Byard. And this is about our fourth take at this uh, for all those of you watching, so it should go really smooth. Um, how are you guys' weekends? I've asked you this three times now, so. It's still great, even the third time. <laughs> <laughs> Tate, what about you? It's still been okay <laughs> after four times. Scott, do you still have a girlfriend after going to the Irish Music Festival or not? Just barely. Okay. <laughs> so in our previous takes for everybody listening, we found out that Tate went to the Music Fest without his uh, his lovely uh, lady, and he's been paying for that. By the way, I uh, saw saw her play some soccer this weekend. Oh, yeah. Did you go? I didn't see you there. No, oh, I actually uh, oh, I, I, I didn't go. That that was weird. I thought I wasn't sure yeah, if I you thought were there. This was the Sportsnet podcast. <laughs> <laughs> he was busy making TikToks for us. He was busy making TikToks. So, um, I'm going to take a second to talk about our sponsors. Of course, without them, we couldn't do all this. Um, and I've done this now three times again, so I should be good at it. Um, first Grieve Law and West Michigan Joint Divorce. Jeff Grieve and his his folks there will help you out with kind of any of your trust, estate, will. Uh, divorce planning you need to do big stone therapies we already found out that tate has not gone to jeremy um and uh, we will likely not have them as a sponsor anymore because <laughs> you know he doesn't he doesn't help them out but um green ridge realty chris dykeman and sarah real north grove brewers again had a watch party there friday night our stream was broadcast and i, I from what i heard north grove was ho- north grove was hopping uh foundation systems in michigan and john botten coldwell banker old dave Dusenberry, and i'm going to keep that on there uh Tate says it's wise and distinguished now. Of course, of course. Um, Shied Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling, and I cannot go without making fun of Cody because it's fun to do. Um, the name that he cannot say, Shield, Shied, Shored, I don't know. Like He, he just can't get it. I, 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 that's my favorite part of the coach's show, by the way, is watching him try to say <laughs> that name. Um, and, it, of course, a very special thank you to our title sponsors, Van Dyke Mortgage Lakeshore and Durga Insurance. Um, Van Dyke's committed to finding you the right home loan. Uh, their experience and license team is welcome, or <clears throat> excuse me, is ready to uh, work with you to ensure a smooth and timely loan process from application to closing. Uh, check them out at 460 West Western Avenue in Muskegon or give them a call at 231-332-6500. Um, Durga Insurance Group uh, looks at success a little different. Um, they place a, uh, the relationship with their customers first, regardless of what stage of life you're in. They're there for you each step of the way with the level of insight and care you deserve. Check them out at their offices on 1535 Far Road in Norton Shores or call them Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. at 231-744-9106. So it's recording, correct? It is. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> Nailed it. Without further ado... <laughs> Uh, let's jump right into this thing. So um, we've already established Ken went to the beach. Tate's not a good boyfriend. <laughs> and Scott does not dance when he goes to the Irish Irish Fest. And I can't talk. And I'm having a typical Monday today. So <laughs> um, any surprises from the Montague Whitehall game Friday night? I mean, I did have <clears throat> Whitehall by a couple points. But I wasn't expecting a 54 54- point deficit and it was just upsetting as a fan to watch so i yeah i agree with you uh tate i on the down low i don't know that i publicly announced this or maybe i did and didn't realize it but i i really thought after watching montague and watching whitehall that there might be a running clock and i mentioned it in the office and tate was just nonstop on me <laughs> at the game Running you clock. You can't be saying that out loud. I, I didn't say it to anybody but you. Now it's out <laughs> that there. That still was too many people. So um, I I wasn't really surprised. I think Whitehall's that good. And Montague has athletes. They just they just don't – I don't know how to explain it. You know what I mean? I mean, you guys have all been around sports. They just haven't figured out how to put it together. Now, I'm losing my homework card by saying all this. So what, <laughs> what did – I mean, Ken, did you catch any of the game? I, I didn't get a chance to, but it, the, the results uh, didn't surprise me. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if it's a matter of Montague not having enough. It's just that Whitehall has that much more. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true, Stephen. Scott, what about you? Well, my first impression was this guy sitting across from me that showed up decked out in blue. I go, oh. you can't wear that. <laughs> I got, not I if got you're banished. Be, <laughs> I got banished. <laughs> not if you're going to be uh, representing us, covering the game or at the game. What I can't blue is one of our. You're wearing, 
I'm wearing blue. You're wearing blue. It's part of our color scheme. I do it's have like a new. I can't wear orange. I do have a, a pretty sweet uh, new hat, new lid, whatever the kids call it now. They probably don't call it either your, of those things. Your drip is good. Right? <laughs> oh, drip. lid. Lid. <laughs> lid. What? Nothing. Like, I, but it's. I, but I know it's, the lingo, Tate. No, but it's blue and white. It's obviously. a blue and white lid. So, so I don't wear it. Well, I do sometimes, but not not often. There's there's no colors that are that are you can wear blue and white all you want. I need a catch mark drip. You do catch you mark do. Drip. Ken, we're mm -hmm. working on it. Um, we Kara has probably already got it ordered. It's just gonna take some time. All right, fair enough. Get you the brunt rat so, discount on the right? catch mark store. So I'm gonna use another word, and I want to watch Tate. Everybody should watch Tate cringe if he's not leaning. Uh, you weren't simping this weekend with your girlfriend, oh. were you? <laughs> <laughs> Can't be using. I know Stop my it. my kids are like I I all weekend I was just saying random stuff and and Owen's like seriously you got to stop. <laughs> I said I'm using it right. He goes you are but technically right, not like cool right. So mm, big um, difference. Big difference. I got so. my kids trying to tell me different lingo to say like, hey dad, say for real, for real, <laughs> say it. <laughs> so I kind of uh, vary that a little bit, but. Tate, Tate basically cool, put though. me on a ban, then he schooled me on hashtags, and then I schooled <laughs> him on hashtags and where they came from. Then I got all nerdy on him at the game. Yeah. You mean so, the pound sign? The pound sign, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's it. Exactly. That that TikTok he did was legit. Oh, yeah, his TikTok was good. Almost, I got almost. I got some TikToks, and he showed me how to do it. I, I, <laughs> like, I was like, holy cow, this is really not Your as hard TikTok as Your TikTok was getting reposted on Snapchat by a few people. Which one? Of Milo doing his best DeAndre oh. Swift impression. <laughs> that was on my personal account. That was pretty funny, wasn't it? Yeah. Like that, that, that was like four minutes of James for 20 minutes chasing the dog around the yard, <laughs> not being able to catch him. So, uh, But, yeah, I was uh, surprised by, uh, like like you said, I am I think every time I watch Cal Stratton, I'm actually surprised a little bit more. He's, he's a real deal, man. He's good. Um, you know, I always knew he could run cause my, my boys came up playing football against him, but like he throws the ball really well too. Um, and then man, Whitehall's receivers. I mean, Cam made some great catches and Ayler made a great catch down on the right side of the end zone. I mean, it, it's just, they're going to be tough, um, all the way around defensively. Uh, I don't know what they're feeding those kids over there, but like, <laughs> you know, so anything else on the Montague Whitehall game, anything to surprise you? So, Ken, are the uh, Norsemen going to take down Whitehall, you think, at some point this year? So, fortunately for us, we don't play them. Oh, <laughs> I didn't look at the schedule. So, if there's any good thing about the switch in the leagues, <laughs> we're okay with that one. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I would say probably uh, offensively, you guys are pretty dynamic, though, at North Muskegon. So. Yeah, I think we're pretty dynamic. Uh, you know, as always, we struggle up front with depth and size, but um, skill-wise, we're pretty pretty solid. Yeah. But. Um, so on the same, on a similar note, so Montague's traditionally been good, right? Like each year, um, they do seem to be struggling a little bit. Any, any, any idea why? I mean, what do you guys think? I think it'll probably just be difficult. You know, it doesn't matter who the next coach is when you transition from an old coach to a new coach, especially one that's been there for as long as Pat Collins did. And he grew that yeah. program as much as he did. And it's nothing against Coach Dennett. If you're a new coach coming into that role, it's just going to be a difficult thing to try to keep that going, keep that same tr tradition. On top yeah. of that, you got the you know you got the coaching thing, but also they've lost um, some kids the last couple of years too, some key key guys. And you're going to it's high school football, yeah. but um, yeah, they're just trying to find an identity is what it feels like right now to me. Yeah, no, that's a good way to put it. Ken, what do you think? Yeah, I think you know all those are factors, and it just it takes head coaches time to establish a culture. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, you just got to be patient with them. And I know that uh, in general, uh, people aren't patient with uh, coaches yeah. and sports, you know, <clears throat> likewise, but just being patient and they'll get that thing turned around. Yeah. I, I've always, you know, often talking about this stuff, I think sometimes success causes unrealistic, unrealistic expectations too. I mean, um, I think if a coach can have you playing and in the hunt and in the discussion for a conference title each year, that's an excellent coaching job. But I think that that, you know, there and there, there's multiple programs around the league that are like this. Now, if you're not winning the league or there and you're not marching, you know, weeks deep into the postseason, sometimes people are a little disappointed or, you know, you're going to have those seasons where it just doesn't come together, whether it's a, a, a chemistry thing or an athlete thing. 
Um, and so I, I do think some of those expectations are a little unrealistic um, at times. Um, I don't think, like, Montague has athletes out there, though. I do think that there's something, it might be a chemistry thing. I don't, they're just not clicking yet. And um, I do think you got to be patient. But um, as the season rolls on and you start getting deeper and deeper, that patience starts to, I mean, you got to put it together right. on the field, right? But you're right about the expectations. And when Ravana had it, was in its heyday. Yeah. You'd notice, like, maybe the next year still had a good team, but maybe not what people were yeah. used to. So fans... Two, two losses, everybody's upset. Yeah, right. everyone right. starts like, panicking, and, and then people maybe stop showing up to games as much, and yeah. maybe there isn't that same excitement that you feel. But it's those expectations, again, because if you look at Montague specifically, I mean, they still beat... I mean, Spring Lake's probably down a little bit, but they got to win there. Yeah. You know, they beat Orchard View, which Orchard View's down as well, but the Ravana game could have gone either way. Yeah. And then Whitehall, a lot of teams are going to struggle with Whitehall this year. I mean, that's just the way it is. Yeah. Um, I, I always look at it, uh, you know, Michigan fans are going to, I'm not saying anything bad about Michigan, but they, they'll, they'll take it that way if you're a, not a Michigan fan. Um, I always felt like that with Lloyd Carr and like, I felt like he got pushed out of Michigan a bit and it was because he was, you know, losing a game or two and they weren't every single year, maybe in the national title hunt, which I always just felt like it was unrealistic and they might've pushed a really good coach out too soon. And I mean, we saw some of the struggles after he left. Like, I feel like there's a little bit of that what have you done lately for me kind of thing. And fans just need to be a little patient with that and understand that, they, like you said, Ken, it takes time to develop culture. Uh, that's hard. So, well, and, and winning football games isn't easy, you know, <laughs> yeah. when you're when you're in it and you're watching film and the, I mean, there's yeah. so many aspects and, and a, a lot of luck. Right. And so sometimes those things just aren't clicking and. Um, you know, unfair expectations, short on patience. Um, that's what drives people out of coaching, whether they are forced to or, or right. do it on their own. Um, it's not easy to win football games. Yeah. yeah I watched, uh, I think it was a TikTok the other day. Uh, and it was, it was Canadian based. So it was a hockey uh, parent standing outside of the rink and the coach walks in and He's like, yeah, hey, I just want to talk to you about my kid. And he basically calls this kid. He's like, well, he's fat and not talented. And like, he just unloads on this guy. And he's like, good talk. And he goes, no, get back in the car. Go. No, we're not. We're going someplace else. You know, like, but that's, you know, sometimes, I mean, unrealistic mm -hmm. expectations, I think, is a big deal. So in perspective to expectations, we're three weeks deep now. Um, what do you think for the leagues in, in both divisions? I mean, how is this stacking up? Is, is there any surprises there? Um, you know, what is this? What does it kind of look like for you guys? Well, I don't think there are any surprises with who's in contention to win league titles in their respective tiers. Yep. Um, you know, we kind of thought Whitehall, Oak Ridge, yep. Montague in the top there battling it out. Mm -hmm. uh, we felt like North Muskegon and, and Ravana kind of in the mix with Hart kind of battling yep. that out. And so I think throughout, through the first three weeks, that's kind of what's boiled to the surface is what, what we kind of expected. Yeah. And we'll be at Fred Jack's Memorial Field this Friday. Yeah. Game of the week. Is that Hart, our, three and one Hart at three and one North Muskegon? I think that's the first time we've ever live streamed from North Muskegon too. I that'll believe be, so. That's, that's, well, we're glad to wait, have wait, you. Wait, wait, no, no. Yeah. We did a cheer event last year. Oh, we did. Oh, that's we, right. We did. Yeah. We, did, we, did. Mm -hmm. yep. we did. Never mind. I forgot about that. But yeah, yeah but still. First time cool. we live streamed a football game. Yeah, yeah that's, that's correct. Mistake. Well, we're looking forward to having you. Good. To, you yeah. know, two of the next three weeks. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't want to put you in a bad spot, Ken, but like, what, what are you seeing with the Pirates? What are you seeing with North Muskegon? Like, what are you, what are you guys worried about? What do you like? Like, um, you know, we feel like uh, Hart's up and coming. Okay. Um, okay. Tannis uh, is, again, starting to establish a culture, culture, and yep. kids are buying in. And so uh, when you start to build confidence, uh, that always makes a team scary. Uh, so you have to come out and do your thing. Um, you know, their offense uh, is a little quirky, but quirky enough for us to have some reservations and, and really yeah. consider what we're doing to game plan and how to stop that. Um, they like to fly around and hit. Yeah, uh, they're physical. Um, they got a couple of guys up front on the D line that are going to wreak some havoc. But uh, it, it'll be a good battle, and, and it'll be fun to have catch mark there and be game of the week and get yeah. some exposure for both those programs. They run the single wing. Are they actually doing that? Yeah, it's kind of single wing ish, power eye ish mm -hmm. stuff like that. Two tight ends. They'll spread it out a little bit. Um, they don't fling it around like we do. 
Um, but uh, have you ever watched fun. Single Wing? Any of you guys ever seen uh, it? They, if they ran it last year against Ravenna, yeah, I've seen it. Um, and I don't think did, they did last year. They though. didn't. No. Yeah. No. I. I'd be. It's I, interesting. I, I'll How be would you explain it? it? The best. Confusing. Yeah. Because <laughs> no. Menominee was no. So yeah. what's confusing about it? I guess. So there's no, no real. That. Yeah. There's no real quarterback. No. So they're just running backs, and then they snap it to a guy. He spins around, and it could go to any back that's going behind him. And so guards are pulling. So it's kind of wing T based, yeah, uh, but a lot more confusing. Really? Yeah. You don't, you don't see it very often. I don't think Menominee even does it anymore. They might not do it anymore. Um, they did for a long time, but I don't know if they do it anymore. We actually ran some single wing uh, when I was at Montague. Oh, really? We had a good group of backs and um, Diamond's like, oh, let's run some single wing. And we're like, well, let's break open the old playbook yeah. on how to do that bad boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got to go to the vault. <laughs> right. <to. laughs> Uh, so is it like I mean Wildcat is similar to that right like or is is Wildcat would just what is one one yeah I mean it's similar right like where you don't know the QB might run he might like it it, it is in that in that regard I think the biggest thing is that in single wing there's a they call it spinner series so the yeah. quarterback is actually like turning his back and so every who know like who knows where the ball's going right yeah so they're hiding. So, it's yeah. all deception right just like right mm-hmm. right yeah all right well huh. Um, so Kimes is not playing, correct? And neither is Hovey. So, I mean, that heart could actually be better. It's too bad those guys chose that. I mean, that's their choice. But, yeah, um, yeah interesting. So on the other side, do we have any uh, key matchups this week, Scott? In the in the, uh, in the big divisions? Yeah, in the big divisions. Uh, well, I think montague Ludington's a big game. For, yeah. for both teams, yeah, I agree. Um, what was it? What did was the score against Oak Ridge? Did Oak Ridge pull away in the second half? It was thirty to eighteen, but it was tight for a while. It was yeah, a game. Ludington hung tough. For, we were we most were, of that. We were talking about it at the Whitehall game because I kept watching. Mm-hmm. I'm like, man, this is closer than I thought. So, yeah. Um, so Montague goes up to Ludington. This is it's week five, and this is Ludington's first home game. Wow, finally. Gosh. That's so crazy. That's a big one. Uh, Manistee's at Whitehall. I mean, I think Manistee. And we'll take well. I mean, I think why well, I'll take care of that. Manistee, they're uh, coming off a closer than expected thirty to fourteen win over Orchard View, but I guess it's already senior night for Whitehall because they only got three home games or home games on their field. Right. So I mean, so Whitehall's got Manistee. As I look out to the, the schedule, Whitehall Oak Ridge seems to me like I mean that's going to be the game. Is Oak Ridge the real deal this year? I have not seen them play at all. Um, I guess my question there is more around like I would have thought they would have rolled Ludington, to be honest with you. And that I don't know if that's more about Ludington's a better team or Oak Ridge. I mean, who's your guys' favorite in that game? Like thinking into the future. So Kerry Harger and I went to Hope College together. Yeah. So I love him to <laughs> death. Uh we seven on seven and team camp with them over the summer. Yeah. And and I thought they were a little down up front. Yeah. Um, not the, the typical overpowering Oak Ridge, although this past week, uh, they ran the ball pretty well. Um, I just, I just go back to Whitehall being that good, mm-hmm. you know, nice. and, the, and their depth and their Gosh, team speed man. on defense. Um, they're just ridiculous right now, and and you know, I, I think Oak Ridge will compete, but I, I don't see that being a game. I mean, I really remember don't. last year at Whitehall, a lot of us thought Whitehall would. I, I did think that last year, and Oak Ridge came and in and came just, in and kind of yeah. I yeah, mean, what, that's how fair. came back in that. But, but I mean, I, do I expect that again? No, yeah. but, you know. I, I just, man, looking out there in Whitehall, like, like you you completely forget sometimes about uh, guys like, uh, was it Irvin? And you forget about Kamar and, like, because you're talking about Kyle and Cam. And, like, I just kept watching guys come off the field, and I'm like, I know that guy's a really great athlete. Like, holy cow, you know, like, everywhere on the field for them. So, um, yeah, I, I kind of, I kind of think it's Whitehall's league to win. Like yeah. honestly, um, but it, you know that's why you play football. Yeah, yeah, but you, you never know. They're just ne- so you fast. Should, you should never doubt Oak Ridge, but right. Whitehall's yeah, per- that's got a nice team. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, people get excited about having team speed offensively. Yeah, but team speed really comes into play on defense. If if mm-hmm. you can fly, you've got a chance, and they can yeah, fly. True. That is true. That is very true. Um, who do you think's the fastest kid on Whitehall's team? I'd love I'd love to ask this to Tony and like be like who's Man. your fastest cuz I mean Bo- I, I, is Bully in the mix he's yeah. got to be in the mix he's got to be in the mix he's like he's lightning a, he's a track kid is, is Kamar is Kamar track kid Irvin kid? Irvin's a track kid Irvin well, didn't Ayla those, win the 400 all four of those kids that won the is it was it the 4 by 1 or 4 by 2 that they're they won all, division 2 like, state title and all four of those guys are playing football yeah. this year I mean Kyle's not slow 
I, Grayson's not slow for Pete's sake. Yeah, you know? Camden's not slow. Cam's I mean, not he's slow. No, he's not. Like, Cam, man, Cam had like two or three great catches. Yeah, too. that moss like, over oh, on that dude. side of the field. Yeah, yeah. man. Like, and I always worry about Cam because he he's just so tall and skinny, but. He plays hard. I mean, like he's he gets after it. So I feel like he's beefed up too since last yeah, year. Sure, he's be- beefed up as Cam can be. I, I would agree. <laughs> and I know he does hit the weights, and he. I mean, he puts in the time. So, um, so yeah, that's that's uh, that'll be interesting. I'm I'm looking forward. How far do you think Whitehall can go? Well, it helps not having West Catholic in your division. in your division. So, yeah. Um, I don't. I they don't I'd have them more Grand Rapids Catholic. Yeah, I see them making a run. I really got, do. South Christian is the team that everyone's talking about yeah. right now. Them yeah. in Whitehall, but I don't think you can forget Forest Hills Eastern, or even like Coopersville. Yeah, I mean the. Well, you, you start you narrowing them. that pyramid, and you just right. start getting to. T- 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 you can't make any mistakes against some of these teams. You've right. seen you the, lose. the snooze to you projections, right? Those are out now. Yep. And I think they have Whitehall playing Fruitport in the first game, which could be... Which Fruitport's tough. Fruitport, they score well, a lot of points. They're putting up some yeah, points. They, they can't stop yeah. anything, but right. they put up a lot of points. Yeah. So, that you know, yeah. who knows? So, you, so you're saying you think they can go all the way? I, I don't know about all the way. I think they can make a deep run. How far? Semis. Okay. Tate? I'd probably go semis? I was going to go with semis. Scotty, where do you think? Well, I think they can get to Ford Field. I think they can. Doesn't yeah. mean they will. Well, what do you think they will do? I don't know. I'm, he's, I'm not a, he's he's a he's a great journalist. Isn't he? He's <laughs> just pick it. Just pick it. <laughs> what do you think? Where? What game are they going to lose at? They could lose in the regional, potentially. What one are they going to lose at, though? <laughs> I'm in the wrong business, I guess. Yeah. I'm going to say they get to Ford Field. All right. I I think first so. time ever. I think so too, and and. I, I think that that might be a homer pick, but I mean, no, I, I think I think South Christian's going to be really tough, obviously. But you know, take them game by game. What what I liked, and what Whitehall did have a couple of of goofy, cocky rivalry penalties that they probably shouldn't have. Yeah. For the most part, though, this team has not done that this year, and I personally, I think that's a difference for them. I, I think they need to keep playing like that. If they do, I really think it, they're only. The team that's going to beat him is himself. I, I like, agree with I, that. I, mm-hmm. I mean, they're they're as good as any team I, I've seen in a long time. You know, I think we were talking at the game, you know, the Montague team from a few years ago with Collins. Like, who would win that game against? What like, what a game that would have been. That would be right? interesting. That'd be yeah, that'd be an interesting so, one. Um, but I yeah, keep hearing no. about South, so I don't. I heard they're big. They've got a good quarterback. I heard one of the receivers is hurt, collarbone or something. Might be back later, but yeah, yeah. So I don't know. And I, I, Whitehall is just going to keep getting better too. I think, yeah. like uh, you know, again, Kyle, dual threat. Jeez, man, they're just they're good all over the field. So shifting gears a little bit, uh, we've been doing the game of the week now a few weeks. What are your thoughts? And I guess I'll look at Ken first because Ken isn't like he's a newcomer to the kind of we'll call it the catchmark team. But like um, this is something we did new this year where we. We're just kind of going around. What have you thought? What do you think? I love it. Any any additional exposure for programs and communities and schools uh, in a positive light? Uh, how do you not like that, right? And so, if your team is willing to co- go out and and make it a big deal and make it a special night, then good for you and and good for those schools in that community. Yeah. What have you thought, Scott? No, I love stressful? it. Stressful. It's stressful when you're there watching <laughs> Billy. <laughs> That stresses me out a little bit. I, you know, to be totally honest with you, I, I really, I will never underestimate, like, like I, I avoid going sometimes to where, when we have a big production because it just, it puts a level of stress on everybody else. Yeah. It's just sometimes not necessary. And, um, no, don't get me wrong. I, I love, ha- love having no, you there. I, I get it. But, um, no, I think it's been a really good thing. I think our production keeps going up and, yeah. um, just all the things we're doing. I've, I've tried to simplify my part of the process in terms yeah, of yeah. writing where you just simplify that writing piece of it, yeah. but just get all the different elements. in. I think the social media aspect has been great. Yeah. You know, Tate and companies done a great yeah, job Tate, with TikToks. Tate had a tick. Well, first he taught me a ton about TikToks this week. <laughs> that was a lot of um, teas right there. <laughs> How do I do, Ken? Good. Nailed mean? it. All right. For real, um, for real. <laughs> <laughs> Sounded like my uh, interview with, um, 
Hunter Hogan oh. word sports, sports, sports. I almost yeah. said the word sports. <laughs> Amy, Amy about like a hundred times in that Amy four minute interview. interview. Scott, how many times did you did you between you and Hunter say we sports? We both said sports a hundred times, I swear. So uh, Tate, you got one, we got a video maybe going local viral. I like would say local viral. Thir- thirteen point two K views, mm-hmm. not bad. And not uh, terrible. Um and then of course, you know, I I posted my first official personal TikTok, which I feel pretty happy about. James chasing the dog around the yard, but um, I I think that's how, what you're supposed to do with TikTok, right? Funny yeah. moments and goofy yeah. stuff. So we actually had a debate the other day, um, and that, this morning actually, I think we were talking about when when should TikToks be posted if we're doing a, a game, and I think we were of the opinion that it's not a live thing; it's something that. You just take pieces of and you and you throw them out there, whether that's funny or cool or whatever. Are we right with that, Tate? Yeah, I think so. And I think, you know, just like based off this last TikTok, you kind of see what people are looking for because they saw a lot of people like to see themselves. I mean, just you yeah, posted the, oh, student, the, the section, student section and that it. got like 8,000 views yeah, and it was crazy. 500 likes. So people like seeing themselves on TikTok, on Catchmark Sports, not TikTok. So. Yeah. Maybe I'll stick with the recap TikToks. That's good. Yeah. What about the uh, ones where it shows the crew setting up? I mean, is there, A, is there value in it? And B, when do you post that? There's value in it when you do a TikTok of Spanky's Pizza. And when, you <laughs> get them, when you get them as a as sponsor. I was going to say. Yeah. That's their I still the haven't heard step. from them yet. I tried. <laughs> and now I just mentioned them on air again. So. Spanky's, no pressure. Spanky's, if you're listening, we'll take you. Go over it down. But yeah. Um, Heading to Fremont tomorrow, maybe that maybe I can maybe you can ha- yeah, talk swing by and ask him. That might be good. Tate, I need you to do something for me though. I, I need you to grab your cell phone and I need you to hold it up in front of the camera. <laughs> Face first. That now I don't know if everybody can see that, but that's what he's posting. Ta- and you can't really tell that his screen isn't just cracked, like half of it isn't there on the, the side. So we're gonna get Mr. Stein a new cell phone. No. One one that is that is not the size of like <laughs> this an SD big card. That, like his, like it, he it makes his hands look big. I think that's why he's. Uh, <laughs> um, and then one that works so that he can he can post TikToks more quickly. So. So um, are we officially nicknaming him TikTok Tate? Then is that, <laughs> that what is we're doing? <laughs> I feel like that's where we're headed. T T T. TikTok Tate. TikTok Tate. <laughs> you got to have a new phone. TikTok Tate. Oh yeah, you definitely do. That's a good one, Ken. I like that. Oh, so, um, yeah, so we're, we're going to hook you up. Yeah. It's on air. It's on the, the official public record. Now, now you have to, now I have to, God. it's definitely going to be an Android phone, not an iPhone. Oh, please but, don't, um, <laughs> don't be that guy. Ken is, is that guy. Ken is officially kicked off. The podcast. <laughs> uh, You're the guy that makes all the text turn green. That's no, you. No, no, no. <laughs> Apple makes all the text mm. turn green. See, and was, you guys all just love him for it. He was a, he was testing me when I first got hired. What kind of phone do you want? I go, I thought. Just go with the that's, iPhone that's like I have, I, like I've had. Like an interview. He's question. like, nope, nope, nope. He's got an iPhone, just for the record. But it's an interview question. It says a lot about you. Uh, to me, it means you're a communist if you use an Android. <laughs> <laughs> like I now, I can't trust you. <laughs> you probably had a BlackBerry too, didn't you? I did have a BlackBerry. Well, who didn't have BlackBerry? Those are <laughs> those, those are sweet. bad. I, I'd take one again. I think I'd rock one right the now. Full keyboard. The full key. <laughs> Thing was like a little brick in your pocket. Mm. I loved it too. I had, I had a little the clip. Oh it. yeah, Ken knows it. That was drippy. Well, be, I worked <laughs> for real, for real, for real, for, for real, for real. <laughs> oh, well, I worked for the federal government, and that's all they issued, right? It was a security thing, and like at the time, they, there wasn't a good option. And yeah, man, and I'd I'd always be ready for the new BlackBerry. You know, I had a Nextel too. Do you have a Nextel? Chirp, chirp, chirp. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Walkie talkie. Yep. When we moved back from Germany, Kara made, uh, I got one because all my friends had one. And Kara was like, she makes fun of me to this day. She's like, those things were, she goes, it's great, but you couldn't tell what anybody was saying. That's fair. You know, mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, all right. That's all right. Fair. So game of the week's been going well. Um, I, I personally have loved it. I think you guys are doing a great job with it. Um, I think it, I think part of our plan has been to kind of expand and show more teams in the conference too. And I think that it really helps. Um, you know, for everybody that listens, it is really hard to pick what game of the week, um, what game is going to be game of the week. Um, you know, you want to balance the competitive nature of it, like what's going to be the best game, but then you also want to spread the love and mm-hmm. and show maybe some of these teams that aren't aren't typically getting coverage. And, um, 
you know, so that's really hard. I think you guys have done a wonderful job trying to balance that and do that. We have shifted one game, correct, Scott? We did. We were going to do the uh, Oak Ridge at Orchard View game week seven, but Orchard View's been struggling. Yeah. Um, they were ready. They were, you know, Leroy Hackley's great to work with. Yeah. He, was, he was ready to kind of yeah help bring out. us in and help yeah. out and do that. But we decided to shift to the Ravana North Muskegon game in week seven just because we think that's there's a lot riding on that one. Yeah, I, w- I would agree. I think that should be a – that should be – That'll be a good one. A division mm-hmm. probably winning game. Whoever yeah. wins that is probably going to win it. So yep. that's at North Muskegon. Yep. Ah, that's homecoming. Nice. Oh man, you guys picked mm. Ravana for homecoming. I didn't pick it. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I but would. I like it though. <laughs> it's great if you yeah, win. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Could be a really good. Well, the, the other piece of that too is they're both Division Seven. So you know, whoever wins that's probably in a pretty good position. Spot, uh, playoff. Wise. Maybe host the other yeah. in the playoffs. Yeah. Although yeah, Ravana does true. have to play. At Oak Ridge in week eight, so that's a tough one for them, right. too. Yeah. And you guys go to Montague, I think, next week, maybe. Yeah. Yep. Next week. So kind of in the same vein of content we're putting out, one thing um, we kind of talked about and that we've really had a struggle with, and and Ken, you have a unique perspective because, you know, you've been an administrator, you've been a coach. None of us have done that, really. Um, we really have some some plans and some things we'd like to do around – uh, stats and standings and, you know, some of that stuff. But I'm going to be honest with you. It has been an absolute bear to try to collect the data. Um, I, I mean, just to get it and, and just to kind of put out there like what we'd like to do. We'd, we'd like to have, um, you know, week in, week out, a, a database of metrics across the conference, like where where you can go and say, okay, in, in 2020, who, who threw for the most yards in the conference? Right. And, um, our struggle has just been getting the information. It's not the tech side. I mean, we got that figured out. It's really getting the data in. And if we don't get all of it, it kind of makes it not valuable. Right. Does that mm-hmm. make sense? Makes so sense, if, yeah. if yeah. two teams don't put their passing yards in, everybody's like, well, that's not really truly who's leading the league because right. two teams didn't put. So, uh, you know, I guess like, Scott, if you could elaborate, I guess, on some of the struggles we've had just getting some of that information and can maybe – how, how do we how do we do this better? How do we how do we make this happen? I think it goes across all sports too. We we're not just looking just for football. Correct. We'd yep. love to eventually build it out so it's all sports. We want, we want yep. to be inclusive and be complete with that. I think a lot of it has to do with expectations of or maybe habits of what people are used to submitting or you know they they think that if unless they see some tangible result for it they think well what am I doing this for if you guys aren't gonna right going to use it in the way but maybe they don't know what we how we want to use it i guess in fairness to them but i sure. just i don't know i don't know what the answer is to to be comprehensive to get everything so what have been i mean can you just elaborate on some of the struggles that we've had with with stuff yeah it's just um getting basically everybody's stats or stat leaders in a timely fashion okay because we, we've been doing the stat graphics for football which I think they look great. They are. They do you look know, great. Putting the photos in, I think, yeah. is an extra touch that we do that I think looks really good. But uh, like each week, you know, John Russell helps us out with that. He contacts yep. the coaches or statisticians and he gets them and he organizes them and whatnot. But what happens without fail is that as soon as he gets that thing sent over to me f- for me to look at, another coach sends something in. Right. And another coach sends something in. Yeah. And then you're like... Right. You want so, to work them in, but you got to set deadlines too. So from the, the the tech guy side, and Ken was kind of making fun of us for nerding out and getting cables ready and everything earlier. Tate was he jumped in on that too. But the tech guy side of me says, y- you create something online, and and I think Max Preps has done something similar. But if you know, we've talked about you know you got to kind of the idea is to sell the value, and I think keeping it conference based helps sell the value a little bit, but. I would prefer as a, as a tech guy, you have an online form where, where every coach or every administrator goes in and they, they make it easy. Thousand they percent. can do it on their mm-hmm. phone. They can do it on, and they yep. enter it. Because you're the cutting auto, out all those different know, steps that we're making right, right now. The struggle, Ken, has been that there's a lot of people around the league, and I'm again, this isn't a name kind of thing, but who's, who wouldn't do that? And how do we get them to do that? Like, how do you, how do you convince them? Well, I think it's it's just a matter of training. So think back to the old school Chronicle days, right? You had a coach who, at the end of the game, called the Chronicle mm-hmm. and rattled off their stats, like literally read off the scorebook or whatever yeah. it was. Yeah. And so making that, whether that's a Google form or whatever that yeah. is, and, and each uh, staff has a guy who's right. willing to do that, right? Yep. At well, the, that's at, just the thing. People 
That's the other part. It doesn't have to be the head coach. And I right. I tried to stress that even going back to M Live was it doesn't have to be you. If you can delegate somebody that you trust to to submit these stats and stuff, that's great. And, yeah. and and you know, making that simple and it's it's probably not the head coach, but having them do by, you know, Sunday, I think is fair. I think about our staff in particular, we have people that would be willing to be the catch mark sports yeah. guy that turns their stuff in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, they they they'll fall in line when they start to not see their kids on leaderboards, mm-hmm. yeah. and when kids get upset and parents get upset that why isn't Johnny on there? Oh, because I didn't so, turn the stats in. So, well, mm-hmm. so do yeah, we, you're right though. So that always puts us in a weird spot. I'm gonna be I'm gonna play devil's advocate because we've had that happen already last year. Sure, and they call us. They're like, why is it? so? Are you telling me that I we need to just drop dimes? A thousand percent. Okay. <laughs> All right. I, you, yeah. No. Heck. Yeah. Like, you're. You will You can only work with the information you're given. If you're not given the information, that's not your fault. Like. All right. Coaches know. Hey, text this number or fill out this there, form. Like. There is yeah. that perception out there for readers though that think, oh, they just don't care about us or something. Yeah. If it's and, missing. And that has not. Like we would. I would. I mean, I got big plans. We've talked about it. We got big plans for like what we'd like to do on the stat side and some of the other stuff. And I think it'd be extremely valuable, not just for us, but for the coaches and for athletes. And, um, but yeah, that's a tough spot because people are like, well, why didn't you cover it? Well, it wasn't us, you know? And like, and then you always run that. Like, I don't, I don't want to drop, you know, like if, if Ken was supposed to send me the stuff, I don't want to make, like, I don't want him to take a bunch of heat either, you know, trying to be a nice guy. Right. Well, I don't want to take the heat, so I'm turning my stuff in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So right. give That's, me a deadline and it's getting turned in. That makes sense. You know? yep. That makes sense. So you, you heard it there. So we do have some big plans and I, I think there could be some really cool stuff. So, you know, like Tate, it won't affect you. You know, you're leading the conference and whatever you're leading them in. Like we can't do that. And maybe we'll get the Jayhawks and some community colleges in there in the future at some point, but do we'll they see. do the kids, younger people? Do they really? You think they dig that? The stats stuff. Do they like? Oh that? yeah, I, yeah. Those guys like. I just remember oh, for sure. the basketball team. They were eating that stuff. They were checking that almost every single. Oh, week. I, I mean, I know I did in high school. It was a chronicle though. I'd mm-hmm. run out and I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, who 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 got what last night? You know what I mean? And like, where do we sit? And um, I went right to the box score off. Well, for sure. Yeah, I, I mean, looked to see if there was a pitcher, and then I went to the box score. If you're yeah. a sports dude, you're you're looking at that stuff. You yeah. know that it, you just are. It's just ingrained in you yeah all right well that's that's good scott you know what to do now drop dimes drop, drop dimes. dimes call them out aka ken buyer <laughs> drop dimes go um, buyer on them yeah so um one of the things we I, I have on our list is to talk about football playoff points so can somebody explain to me the algorithm on how playoff points are are determined it, because i'm just it's, there's got to be a simpler way it Really? I can't tell you the algorithm, but I can tell you there's a simpler way <laughs> All right. mm-hmm. that that offers equity, yeah. and and we experienced it with COVID. Let every kid, let every team in. I was. That's where you beat. That's me where it. you go. Yep. And if you want to opt out, opt out. If you're one and whatever, two and whatever, or you just and you aren't, get smoked, and you don't want to play. Mm-hmm. You know the number one ranked team in your district. Opt out. But do you, it's, do you think? It's, do you think people would opt out? For sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think they they would. I mean, yeah. you don't want to send kids into the slaughter, right? <laughs> and so you have to have real conversations with your kids. And I think if you're, you're, you know, you've had that culture where you're talking to kids and listening to what they're saying, they're going to tell you, like, you know, what, we'd rather not go play blah, blah, blah. But, um, but that's the only way to provide equity. It makes yeah. no sense that football is the only sport that doesn't, doesn't allow every team the opportunity. Mm-hmm. So why, I mean, I'm just, this is pure speculation, right? And again, um, why? Why don't why don't we do that? It didn't it worked fine in COVID, I thought. Like I didn't see any like major problems or schools going bankrupt or kids like like it worked pretty well. And now there were some blowouts. Sure. Like but I would argue that there's always blowouts in sure. the first round. Absolutely. You, you, you never know. You know, like um so why don't they do it? What do I mean I, I can't answer that. I, I, I can't don't know answer if it's it, a, but take can. <laughs> can I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just I don't know. Maybe some people are somewhat opposed to change. You know, you do some things for a certain while, and sometimes people just don't like switching it up. Yeah. No. In, in general, I don't. I can't tell you specifically. I I knew before how you factor all that stuff in because yeah, because you get and maybe it is similar to that now. A certain amount of points for A, B, C, or D that you beat, then bonus points depending on how many games they've won, and even some of the games they've lost, but a much smaller scale. Yeah. Of but. Basically, it's supposed to reward you for scheduling 
tough teams now. That's very yeah. very general way of putting it. Even if you lose, you're still going to benefit to some degree by by scheduling up or by scheduling tougher teams now. Yeah. Every team gets in, scheduling's irrelevant. Yep. That's what I was And now say. league yeah. championships can really mean something. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep, that's where your seating comes, right? Like, yep. I, I would agree with that. Like, I, um, there are two things that bother me right now in, in high school sports, and again, they're the ones I'm closest to, would be football and basketball. Basketball needs to go to multi-divisions more than what they have. Absolutely. I think that's a huge problem. Um, I'm starting to lean more towards shot clock and basketball, too, to be honest Amen. with you. Um, but then it's the football playoffs. I don't, I just don't, I agree with you. I don't understand why we don't do it. Um, I think it's something that needs to be done. Um, Scott, I do get the sense that you're not quite a hundred percent on board with it though. Is that true? With what? Not? Well, everybody in the playoffs. No, I actually, I, I do like okay. it. I do. I do really like it. I, I thought it worked well. And, and like Ken said, I mean, we do it for every other sport. Why can't we do it for this one? Yeah. Outside of what Tate said with tradition, yeah. you know, yeah. dying hard, that kind of stuff. Yeah, but yeah. I, I would be in favor of it. Yeah, you're going to get me rolling on things that MHSA could do that make more sense. <laughs> this guy, this guy is basketball, not afraid. To basketball avoid. does need. They it do. should they be six. Divisions. It yeah. should be six. Yeah, there's no eight r- for football is too many. Yeah, you know. Oh, you think so? There should be a Catholic league playoff or a, a multiplier like other states so, have. So I'm just going to put it all out. Well, there. this guy, even when he was an administrator, he wasn't afraid to share those no, feelings. No, I, I mean, I agree on, with on the, social media. I agree with a lot of. I agree with a lot of that stuff too. Um, I, I like from the football side. I never heard the there's too many divisions, so that's a that's a new one to me. I could see it though. Like, well, and the 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 more teams are playing eight man, right? Yeah. So you have less eleven man teams, yeah. And we still have eight divisions. Yeah, it's watered down. Yeah, go to six. Go to six. Yeah, and then go to six in basketball on top of that. Yeah, hundred percent. I don't yeah. know why BCAM doesn't make that a charge every year. We want yeah. six divisions, yeah. and it's only because the MHSA <laughs> wants all the finals in the same day. I mean, would you argue mm. even that, yeah, oh, yeah, that's true. I'm going to put it out there. Wow. I never <laughs> thought about it like that. That is true, though. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Wow. I would say, I would, maybe, the, I would say in basketball, it's actually more important to have more divisions, too, because I think it's, it's such a smaller team. It's harder to hide, um, I guess I, I would put it like like we would play Reese Puffer. We played Reese Puffer when I was in school. Our starting five was similar, let's say, to Reese Puffer's. You know, now they're uh, occasionally they're going to have a really great player that we just we're just not really going right. to ever see. But six through eleven, not even close. Right. Not not even close. And that's the benefit of a bigger school. Though that, that those top eleven in basketball, in football, you can have a huge team and maybe twenty percent of the team doesn't even see the field. Yeah. Now I, I would say there's some similarities, but I think you can hide some of that somewhat a little bit better. But I don't know. Yeah. Well, that there are more teams that play basketball than play football, and yeah. we have less mm-hmm. divisions for basketball. Yeah, it like, make sense. Yeah. Duh. <laughs> yeah. So everybody in the playoffs. So that that's the Catchmark Podcast push. We're, we'll push it. So I'm in. I, I agree with that. So, um, so one of the things, kind of going back to the conference, the switch in the conference. How do you guys, I mean, how do we look overall from a football perspective? Are we typical West Michigan Conference this year? Do we have as many good teams as we usually do? Are we, are we looking down? Are we going to make noise in the playoffs? I mean, I would, I would say I think Whitehall is going to make noise. We've already talked about that. I think North Muskegon and Ravenna both could make noise in their division. Um, but those are the three teams for me that I look at. I say, you know, I, I, right now at the, this point in the season, I don't know. You know, I, don't, I always hate to... to count Oak Ridge out because they just come up with stuff, you know, and then, and great coaching, great culture, and they'll often win, but that's kind of what I'm seeing. What do you guys think? Well, I, I think, um, like we said earlier, the ones we thought would make some noise yeah. are making noise. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I can't say that the addition of the new teams has made, um, the league stronger in football. Yeah. Um, you hope that maybe it gets to that point at some time, <clears throat> uh, but that old West Michigan conference, um, how it, it play has played out in the past is probably how it's going to play out this year, uh, spread amongst two divisions, right? And yeah. so, um, yeah, I don't know. It, it, do, you, it, do you think that the conference realignment happens if all teams get in in football? Ooh, I just that's a great question. Yeah, that's a great question. That's a great question because I think football drove a lot of it. That's a really good question. 
if everybody got in, would there be a need for a, di- a conference room? Again, I defer to Tate because you know. <laughs> Tate has been awful. TikTok quiet. Tate, come TikTok on, Tate. Tate. <laughs> come no, on, some Tate. of this is above my pay grade. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Come on, he's getting you a new phone. You can answer yeah. this. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I personally, so I was AD in the league for a yeah. while. Uh, I pushed for larger uh, league from day one. Yeah, uh, I just, I just think it, it, that was too small. I, I, it was nice to, for scheduling and you knew the people. But at some point, it's okay to like branch out. Yeah, no, and, and, you got a good product. People, right, and I just, it's balanced. Yeah. yeah, and so where it's at, I think is where it needs to be, and and give it some time, and and we'll see where it lands. Yeah. But I think it's a step in the right direction. Would it have happened as quickly though? Yeah, that that's a good question. I don't. I, I personally I don't, don't think it would have. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, interesting. Um, so uh, you know, on that same note though, the the new conference editions, how are they faring in the West Michigan Conference in football? And I think we kind of all have seen. I think it's been tough sledding personally. Um, what do you what do you guys think? I think it's probably about where I thought it would be. I mean, you know, you look at each division. I think Ludington or Fremont are probably middle, middle to low. I shouldn't say lower. I mean, things got to play out yet. Yeah. You know, we got to have to see Montague, Ludington, because where are those going to Yeah, I'd like, that's going to be a fun game shake to watch, Oak, Fremont's at Oak Ridge this week, I think. So. Yeah, those will be good good litmus tests yeah. to see mm-hmm. kind of where those programs yep. are, um, you know, related to where a traditional West Michigan Conference team is. And, yeah. the, and the Rivers Division, though, you're looking at Hesperian Holton and, you know, Holton's they're in a they're in a spot where they're struggling right now. So do you do you think that that the league strength is going to bring those programs up? Do you think that'll happen? That's or? the hope, right? I mean, right. you like we talked about last podcast, mm-hmm. the competition element, yep. and, and you hope that um, administrators and, and programs see that okay, that's how they're doing it right down the we road from us. It. We need to do the same thing, same mm-hmm. things. So you hope that that does that. My fear is that just numbers alone. Um, it's going to change the rivers um, and how that looks just because school is not being able to have teams. And so that's right. always a fear with some of those smaller, smaller schools. schools. And, yeah. and we talk about eight man and they've already started talking about, you know, will some of those schools go to eight man? Will the JV teams to bring them back play eight man? How does that change the thing? You know, the, well, the right. scheme. Played eight, eight player on JV last year, right? Right. Right. And then the, <clears throat> this year it was uh, struggle whether they're going to have a varsity team, 11 player varsity or not. Right. And, they and, do, if, but and if they have conversations about, we don't have enough kids, we want to play eight man. Now, what do we do? Mm, right. Yeah. And so those are things that just are, I think have to be on AD's radars. Yeah. I, I so, and maybe this is just me being completely oblivious to it. I don't remember numbers ever being a factor when I was in school for, for almost any sport ever. Like, and I don't even small schools, like, I, you know, we talk about basketball. Mon- Montague hasn't had a freshman basketball team forever. We always had one. We always had 30 kids go out for the JV, right? Like, um, I, why? Why is that happening now? Is it too many distractions, too many other things for kids to do? Um, like, w- w- you know, why are the numbers a problem? Are we talking football in general? We're talking or about sports? All, all of them, sports in general. But, I mean, football is the kind of the topic of conversation, but like, I think this is this is bigger than just one yeah. sport overall, but yeah. Well, I I don't know if I necessarily have the answer, but if you if you think about tradi- traditional powerhouses, Menden, yep, eight man, mm-hmm. Climax Scotts, eight man, um, Sutton's Bay, eight man, and so that's a real thing, right? And so whether that's because for football the the concussion scare, right? Uh, although they say that numbers are trending back up uh, <clears throat> across the country. Uh, because of the better technology, more information. Right. But I think that was a major impact on on participation rates and moms just kind of being worried about their kids, which is rightfully so. But um, and and I think I don't know if kids are just into hard work like they used to be. You know, and I don't mean to tick anybody <laughs> no, off, no, but I, I mean we're gonna keep talk truths. Let's talk <laughs> truths. Like it's just a different kind of build and 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 specializing too. More kids are like I can only play this sport from now on. And, and so they're not doing other things. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? Specialization. I mean, I don't know how much that plays into it too. Um, it, smaller schools are smaller schools and there's maybe, it's maybe different for bigger schools. Although a school like Grand Haven, you know, they couldn't, they, I know, they, you're they, seeing big they didn't schools. want to play against Rockford Friday because they felt they didn't have enough healthy bodies to do it. Yeah. And I don't, they don't have a JV this year either. Sounds either. like either. 
That's a 2,000 kid school yeah. that no, couldn't that's what I put mean. a football team together. Yeah. yeah. And West Ottawa was in that spot a <laughs> yeah. few years ago, too. Oh. Yeah. Uh, coming off a really successful season the year before, didn't have a JV. Tate, I mean, you're just kind of recently removed from this. Like, yeah. And if we talk in sports in general, what, what are you seeing? I mean, like, what, how, why do you think it's that? It's probably a culmination of specialization and also the amount of a little, I would probably say distractions. I mean, I think about my dad telling me stories, some of the guys that he used to play with coming up in middle school. And some of those guys sounded like they were a little, I don't want to say gumpy, but some <laughs> of the guys that maybe aren't so coordinated, <laughs> they'd still play the sport. They still try to participate yeah. in the yeah, sport. Yeah. And I just feel some of those guys that like in my high school growing up that they maybe just stop. Yeah. They had a lot of height, but they just didn't have the coordination. Those guys probably back then would try and participate, but now they probably just, they have different interests. Yeah. I mean, I just think back, I, I didn't play football, but in basketball, we fielded, we cut at the freshman level, the JV level and the varsity level. We had enough bodies. I mean, we had, like I said, we had 27 kids go out for a freshman basketball team, you know? And like with only three sophomores up or two sophomores up at the time, you just don't really see that anymore. Yeah. Um, and football, I think what I, I remember it was rare for an underclassman to be brought up to the varsity. I mean, you yeah. had to be really good, really good, yeah. really good mm -hmm. and physically well developed right. to be brought up. And it just didn't happen back then. Now, I mean, some of the guys in Montague's team, you know, like, I mean, OJ has been up, I think since his sophomore year, freshman year, Isaac, same thing. Like some of these guys have played varsity football for four or five years, you know, four years, not five. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. uh, yeah, no. <laughs> That's happening in North Muskegon. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you, you know what I mean? Senior. Overall, like you're seeing a lot of underclassmen play at the varsity yeah. level. JV teams are not having as many kids. Like, I don't, I don't know. It's kind of. Well, cool. I think you bring up a good point. You said physical conditioning and, and um, that's the extra stuff that kids have to do just to be on teams. Right. Right. And mm -hmm. I don't know if, if more and more kids are like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that extra stuff. I don't want to lift. I don't want to do the conditioning. I'd rather do my other thing. Um, if they, if they, um, that just, that investment isn't enough for their passion for that sport. And so they're like, mm, I'm out. Back in the day, we didn't have to do all that stuff. You could yeah, just show true. up in you August and play. play. True. Now, if yeah. you don't bust your tail all summer, you're probably not going to see the field much. And right. then they're like, well, then forget it from day one. I remember when, uh, when Coach Collins, he did, he asked me to play slot in my yeah. sophomore You'd year. You'd have been tough. I don't know. And <laughs> he asked me to play a slot, though. And I'm hearing all my friends on the football team talking about two a days. Yeah. Four, five hour practices, yeah. all the stuff they got to do on top of that. And I'm like, I don't know if I like football that much to spend that much time. Exactly my and, point. And that's what I mean. Owen went through that this year. He was talking about playing football and not soccer. And, I, you know, I looked him square in the eye and I'm like, are you ready to go out and put that amount of time in? You might not see the field, bud. Yeah. You know, like you, you, you literally might not. And I mean, I wasn't trying to talk him out of it necessarily, but I also didn't want him to get into it and be, have the blinders. And I'm like, you haven't played in two years. There's going to be a lot of stuff that you need to go to and participate in that you're going to have to hit the weight room harder than you are. You're going to have to do all these things and then you might not play. Yeah. Um, but so, yeah, I mean, he's a kid too. Like he, I think in his head, he's like, yeah, I'm not, I'm well, not into that. Yeah. You know? So I hear you tell that story, and as a coach and as a parent, I appreciate you having that conversation oh, yeah. because, as we know, um, generally parents' brains turn to mush when you're talking about their own kid, yeah. right? Yeah. And so uh, good for you for making him reflect on here are the things that are expected now, and right. you still might not play. It doesn't guarantee you anything, yeah. right? If, if a program's solid, that shouldn't guarantee you anything. It's about putting in the work. Yeah. Yeah, it's no, good and, for you. and he, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, he he definitely backed off of it. Now he's saying he wished he would have, but they I mean, always I, do. You know, mm -hmm. I, I mean, it's one of those things. I said, and I'm not a, I'm not a dual sport guy. Putting it all on the table, like I, I really, I wish, I wish everybody could play everything. I mean, in my my heart of hearts, I wish it worked, and I wish you you could play every sport that there was known to man. But life is about trade offs, and so in our house, it's like. One or the other. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And I don't care which you do like go, go do it. But you know, um, I just feel like that leads to overtraining and not commitment to the team and a whole bunch of other stuff. But, um, yeah, interesting. So, yeah, I mean, I think that like what you said, I think the distractions too, Tate, like, I, I think that there's, I mean, the first thing my kids want to do when they come home often is 
head downstairs and play video games yeah. um, or jump on the computer or, you know, stay I mean, on their phones, stay on their phones. And Noah's fixing his hair so he can get a good snap. I mean, like, <laughs> like that, I literally that kid will sit on Snapchat for like, I'm like, what are you doing? I like, mean, yeah, I literally graduated with a kid six foot nine, didn't play on any field, any yep. court, <sighs> nothing. That's heartbreaking. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Every short guy out there is heartbreaking. Like, oh, what are you doing? What are you, you doing? Know? Like, seriously, I would have killed. Just give me three of those inches. For real? Know, like, right. I mean, oh, yeah. But yeah, no. Interesting. So, well, I think that about wraps it up. Unless you guys have some other topics that are uh, sitting at the top of your head or at your heart you want to talk about. Scott, you got something? A little bit, just because it ties into North Muskegon. Uh-oh. I know I've. We've already we're, we're touching on it in the player of the week. We kind of put this young man in there, and then we mentioned it on the catch up that we recorded. But yeah, uh, Tate Panucci. Mm-hmm. Um, oh yeah, he's you know he was diagnosed with leukemia a couple yep. of years ago, and I heard it was a really awesome kind of thing last Monday, where he had uh, chemotherapy in the morning and then he went and played tennis. Cody Liverance, the, the coach there at North Muskegon, didn't think he was going to. Didn't think he'd feel well enough, and then did, and won, and they he, won their match. Okay, he had chemo, and then went and played tennis. Yeah, yeah and they First won. Off, the the grit to be able to do that won. Like my mom had cancer, and I watched a tough lady do chemo, and yeah. you do not feel good after you're done. That's insane. and they they won their match, their doubles match, and then because they won that match, they they won the team match, and they're kind of struggling this year. North Muskegon is. Yeah, but that was a good team oh, win that's for them. Amazing. And, but I mean, what. You, you you know the the young man I the do. family I love Tate he's a special kind yeah. of kid that's spe- that family special they're special in North Muskegon community mm-hmm. um, Tate's a fighter too you know he yeah if, no if there's any kid that is gonna have chemo and then go play tennis he's the guy um, so good for him and it's good to see him competing again I know he's really hoping to play football next year mm-hmm. Tate was a heck of a football player. Um, so we're excited about that possibility. Um, so hopefully he stays on the, the course of uh, being That's healed awesome. um, and we see him back out there. But kudos for him and Cody and for all those guys for making that work. Yeah, and a related topic, uh, Keegan, Keegan Swan, we've written about him yeah, here too. Yep. Everybody, it sounds like there's a chance he might be able to come back this season yet and play. Oh, that'd be he's, awesome. He's working at it. And so I think that his doctors have said he could probably do it and keep the port in or whatever and still play. But that's something that they're working toward. I mean, you you think about your life and you think about trials that you've been through and then you hear stuff like that and you're kind of like, boy, yeah, I mean, I'm going to play with a port in. Right. And I'm, I, I mean, in school I was worried about a twisted ankle or Mm -hmm. right. Right. You know, arguing with my sister or something, you know, like, but that's just amazing. So yeah, our prayers will be with uh, both those young men and, Mm -hmm. and, you know, I'd love to see him back doing what they love full time. And sure. Yep. Um, no, that's awesome. That's a good, that's a good one, Scott. So, yep. so I guess we'll, we'll kind of end there. Um, thank you everybody. Uh, again, we're doing a little bit of a different format now. Um, we're still going to have guests, but they're going to be a little bit more few and far between. Ken's going to sit in and be a, uh, be here most weeks, I think. So I'm um, glad have to have yeah. you, Ken. Um, uh, so on behalf of Catchmark Sportsnet and our team, uh, thanks again for joining us with the podcast. I have to mention our, our sponsors again, Grieve Law, Big Stone Therapies, Green Ridge Realty, Chris Dykeman and Sarah Real, North Grove Brewers, Foundation Systems of Michigan, and Mr. John Bodden, Colwell Banker, Old Dave Dusenberry, uh, Shied Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Did you catch that, Cody? Shied, Shied. Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Um, and, of course, our title sponsors, Van Dyke Mortgage Lakeshore and Durga Insurance Group. Thanks again, guys, and uh, we'll talk to you next week.